My name is Chris, and today we are looking at the IOTA VX MP3 Network Streaming CD Player. We'll also be picking the winner of the Neurophone headphones at the end of this video, so stay tuned and welcome to the Vinyl Attack. As the name of this show would indicate, I am a fan of analog audio, especially in the realm of vinyl. Old records, new ones, limited edition, one-step pressings, or bargain bin finds, the whole thing is just my cup of tea. But as much as I do adore my record collection, I also wouldn't trade in my CD collection for anything. Well, these days anyway. As with most types of collections, my assembly of discs has ebbed and flowed over the years for many various reasons, but still holds a firm spot in my house today. It would look much better if IKEA hadn't stopped shipping the Nedby shelving unit to the US, however. This is still a sore spot with me, as trying to find a CD tower that holds a good amount of discs and also looks nice is a pain in the ass. But my complaining about the storage isn't why we're here. The offering from IOTA VX that can play my overflowing collection is. The IOTA VX NP3 wears a few different hats. It can stream high-res audio, it has Bluetooth capability when you purchase the necessary adapter, and clearly, it plays CDs. But that's not all. You'll also find DAB+, FM, and internet radio with the necessary antenna included, the means to process up to 24-bit, 192kHz resolution files via USB, and the option to use the NP3 as a full-on preamp if you'd prefer. So let's start at the top and work our way down with a closer look at the details. On the face of the MP3, you'll find the signature look power button, a drawerless slot for your CDs, and back, forward, return, and mode buttons that surround the volume knob which also acts as a select button. Pressing mode and using the volume knob to scroll through the list of playing options, you can confirm your choice with a simple push. You'll also find one of two USB ports located here. Inserting a CD is as easy as you'd think by simply giving the disc of your choice a little push. The MP3 will safely take this off your hands, and the automated startup will handle the rest. Loading time wasn't perhaps lightning quick, but in a real-world application, I found that the music was just starting to play by the time I sat down in my listening position. When using the Bluetooth transmitter that IOTA VX supplied for the SA3 review I did, the option to connect from my phone came right up. Admittedly, while I don't do a ton of Bluetooth streaming, I did find it handy when I wanted to listen to an audiobook while doing some work around the house. If this is a preferred method of music playback for you, rest assured there weren't any hiccups and the setup is a breeze. You also have the option of streaming with either Wi-Fi or a wired LAN connection, and the usual suspects of Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, and Cobuzz make their way onto this unit. Connecting to Wi-Fi was as easy as ever I experienced, but I must say that I never did get the opportunity to take advantage of this connection. Having spent the vast majority of my time with the MP3 using it as a CD player, I waited until the very last minute to try using Wi-Fi to stream any music. Having just the free version of Spotify, who simply stated that the MP3's playback was restricted and free version of Tidal at this time, I wasn't successful even when using the recommended We Am Home app. I bring this up only to say that I offer my apologies to IOTA VX for not being as thorough as I should have been, and the same apologies to you. Any email I've sent to the IOTA VX team has been answered very quickly in the past, and were I doing my job better, I would have done just that to solve this problem. Time ran out with the review scheduling I currently have though, and this is completely my fault. I did, however, connect the NP3 to the PA3 amplifier that I still have at home to see how that would go. I found the option of using the MP3 as a preamp quite intriguing. Many people looking at the IOTA VX lineup are considering them because they want high quality playback at a reasonable price, something for which the brand has become well known. Taking the MP3 and using that with a power amp can remove one piece of equipment in the chain, saving you money. Let's say you're looking to spend around a grand and you'd like as many options as you can get with that budget while still focusing on quality sound. Taking the MP3, which is currently selling for a nice round number of $663 US, and then adding the PA3, which goes for $398, you'd be just a shade over that $1,000 mark at $1,061. Yes, you'd still have to pay for shipping, but even at $75 to ship the two units combined to my house, just as an example, that still doesn't break the bank. You would need to make some minor concessions on connectivity with the MP3 as your preamp though, as it has far fewer options than their SA3 integrated amp. But with all the things that the MP3 can do, you might not need as many connections. Clearly, this is something you would need to consider in your unique situation. I also finally connected the trigger and dimmer options to see how that all worked out, as I missed it in my SA3 and PA3 review. Using the included 8th inch cables, it couldn't have been any easier, and you can see that both units dim in unison when using the remote. The logo on the PA3 does glow brighter than the other IOTA VX products I have at home at the moment, but that wasn't something that really distracted me as I was more impressed with the dimming options in the first place. 
Using the trigger ports likewise provided the expected results. Pressing the power button on the MP3's included remote control, the unit fired right up with the amplifier following suit not long after. Upon pressing the button again, the amp turned off first this time, with the MP3 doing the same moments later. Little things like this might not seem like much upon first glance, or use, but over time I think you'll find that they are quite handy and you'll be glad that you have them. While the remote of the MP3 looks very similar to that of the SA3, there are definitely differences. Most notably, the CD controls have been moved to the very top, and there are additional options available like shuffle, repeat, and auto scan. Otherwise, there have just been a few layout changes here and there that suit the MP3's needs better. The SA3 remote does work seamlessly with the MP3 though, if you're looking for a one remote solution to a full IOTA VX product lineup. So the features are strong, the look is clean, and the options are plentiful. Did the sound match the rest of the package? I would say that it did. While I'm certainly not the authority when it comes to CD players, their decks, and the other impressive technical components that make up these types of products, I do like to think that I know good sound when I hear it. Taking the only item I had in-house for a comparison, I hooked up my old Panasonic Blu-ray player to the MP3 into two Toslink inputs in my Hegel H90. I happen to have two identical copies of ACDC's Back in Black on CD, because why wouldn't you, and press play at the same time. Switching inputs back and forth, something I do thoroughly enjoy about digital sources, I was able to discern that the MP3 was a touch sharper in the top end. The vocals just seemed to have a little bit more presence, even if this was ever so slight, and the cymbals had a touch more shimmer. The overall feeling of the MP3 was that it just leaned a bit toward the highlighting the mids and upper frequencies. Nothing seemed harsh though, and the sound was just as crystal clear as you would expect from a CD. I didn't find a lack of bass necessarily, but I also did prefer using my SVS 3000 micro subwoofer to fill out the sound. Of course, that's a standard feeling these days with just about any product I'm using. Once again, I did find that I preferred the sound of the MP3 with my Qacoustics 3030i stand mount speakers as opposed to the Buchart S400 Mark IIs that Maz Buchart has been kind enough to loan me. While the MP3 didn't sound bad on the 400s, I think they're just too revealing for the streamer and the micro flaws you might search out in its sound will be more apparent. The Qacoustics, while still having nice detail and depth, just smoothed everything out a little, making for a better match. This doesn't surprise me all that much considering the price point of the Viota VX products. I feel like people who are buying these items for an affordable yet quality sound will probably, but not certainly, be less likely to spend over $2,000 on a pair of speakers to match. The Q Acoustics fall right in line with the price point here and I very much like the pairing. So much so that this has become my secondary system and a damn good one at that. So with all that praise, what didn't I care for with the MP3? As with my review of the SA3 and PA3, not much. Again. With my overlooking the dimming options last time and finding them this time, thanks to many of you for pointing it out, that can come off my list. I suppose the small preference of how the volume is displayed using a negative dB system could still be a thing, but I don't seem to mind it at all anymore now that I'm used to it. The remote is still fairly intimidating at first look with its overwhelming amount of buttons, but even that has become easier to use with time. Some of you might not care for the drawerless operation though. Having a machine take the CD right from your hand can be a bit disconcerting at first if you're not used to it. I also feel like you need to pay a bit of attention as you don't want to insert a CD at too much of an angle to avoid any unnecessary friction upon entry. Again though, this will come down to your preferences. Otherwise, I would like to have seen more connection options on the back, specifically analog, considering IOTA VX's touting of the MP3's ability to work as a preamp, but again, that will be situational as some of you won't mind at all. So without having another streaming CD player for a comparison available, especially at this price point, I'd say that's about it. If you want a CD player, or a streamer, or a preamp, there are several options out there that can do a fine job for you at a good price. If you'd like all of these things in one product that has a pleasing sonic performance and still has a good price though, I think you'd be hard pressed to find something that does it better than the MP3 for this kind of money. Now for the winner of the Neurophone headphones that were graciously supplied by Neura. From 149 unique comments, Dean Baker, you have won this giveaway. Please shoot me an email at your earliest convenience and we'll sort the shipping details. As for the winner of the Neuro True earbuds, I'll have that drawing on Patreon just as soon as I'm back from Axpona on Monday. Thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon who help support this show. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch and I look forward to next time.